Hello, Aries. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. Thank you so much for joining me here today for your special update. If Aries is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Remember to hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. If there is anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Aries, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And we've got the Art or Temperance card. This is uh, the pressure cooker, okay? I used to think this is like kind of the kitchen, you know, but now we've sort of gotten even more intense. Now it's actually a, a tool in the kitchen. It's the pressure cooker. And I feel like this is your, um, this is your ability to endure the tests and the trials and, um, you know, the, um, the challenges of life. Okay, it, this is the feeling that, you know, you are, every day is a pop quiz, you know, but then there's also, you got to take finals at the end of the year or whenever people take finals. Um, I think you're used to a lot of these kinds of things, which is like, it almost feels as if spirit is sort of um, pressurizing you periodically um, to, uh, to prepare you, right? And it's kind of also the furnace. It's someone being put into the fire. Uh, the way that, you know, some raw metal ore is kind of, is transformed into a, you know, the, a strong sword, you know. And I feel like this is kind of it. You get put into the fire, you get really heated up, you get pulled out of the fire, you get banged around a bit, and then back in the fire you go. Um, and I feel that this is maybe what your life has been like for a while, like lately at least. All right. We're going to put this into some context and we're going to see what else is going on here. We got the hermit mode. Okay. That makes sense to me. We got the five. I mean, there's kind of the fire, sometimes more, sometimes less, but this is also kind of you uh, knowing when to, when to struggle and knowing when you're kind of just supposed to just sit back and like, and let the fire transform you. Let the difficulties like do their magic on you. You know, you're not trying to fight against spirit when these things uh, enter your path, okay? I really, I feel like you're, I feel like you're chosen. You know, I feel like the greater the trials, the greater the rewards. Here's that Empress energy. A six of swords, very nice. And the hanged man, yeah. Um, the hanged man plus the, the hermit, um, sort of saying that I, I know you want to fight against this and I know that you're in this situation and you want to just struggle to get out of it. It's kind of saying with the hermit and the hanged man that it, it might be easier to sort of trust the process, allow it to do its thing, allow it to run its course. And on the other side, we've, oh, look at that. We've got, okay, wow, that's good. We've got the Hierophant. We've got the Six of Pentacles. We've got the nine there. That's the very strong sword coming out of the fire, right? And we've got the ace of cups. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this really, I mean, this is, uh, this is your destiny. You are, you are chosen for this. Um, and the idea is very, uh, I think very clear. You're not being instructed to struggle against something and try to get out of the situation, right? It's kind of one of those uh, Chinese finger traps. The more you struggle, the more you can't get your fingers out of there. It's best to just go steady and easy and sort of let it let it take its course. Um, like uh, when you feel that your car is starting to fishtail or you're starting to spin out, the instinct is to dry, is to steer against it, right? The inst instinct is to sort of drive the other way, swim the other way, steer the other way. But really what you're supposed to do, at least that's what I hear, is you're supposed to sort of ease into it and slowly apply the brake. Okay, I'm not a driving instructor. Don't take my word for it. That's what I was taught. Uh, we're going to select the mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. Gosh, Aries, come on. 
That card just volunteered, jumped out of the deck, forced its way. Another five of wands, same card. Okay, there's this, I mean, I think that's a confirmation that you want to fight against this. The instinct, it's down beneath the surface here, right? Your instinct is to fight against this. If you're, the car's starting to spin out, well, it makes sense. You want to steer, I'm going to force it to go the other way then, you know, instead of doing what seems counterintuitive, going against your nature. I'm just going to spin right along with it and then we'll be along our merry way here. Uh, let's select this mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card, random card from the Smith Waite Tarot. This is the factor infinite and unknown. It's going to go right here with alien Simon Mork Ripley. Um, let's try to predict this card. Let's use our intuition. All right. Let's see if we can do it. It's important that we practice as often as we can. Um, and we'll take a look at the very end on that card. All right. Now, this is not a reading that's going to replace your normal twice weekly readings on Mondays and Fridays. This is a sort of special update. I felt the need to bring. Um, it's going to, you know, uh, it's going to hopefully be a shorter message for you today. Um, but you still have your regular readings, okay, on Mondays and Fridays. Let's take a look around the room here. Major, 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 major. A lot of major arcana, and we've been saying that this whole past two cycles of, of readings. A lot of major arcana coming out for most people. Most signs are getting a lot of major arcana. The only thing you're missing here is the tower, right? Usually the tower's been coming out in a lot of these things. But for me, it, it doesn't feel like you're having a tower moment. It feels like you're kind of, um, you're, well, I mean, if you are inside the tower, it's not really a tower that's breaking open and crumbling down. The tower to me now kind of looks like a, like a pizza oven, you know, that we're sort of in there and uh, we're just, we're cooking. And it's uncomfortable. We don't like it. Our instinct is to get the heck out of there. But we know this is something good. Okay? It could be a school thing. It could be a work thing. It could be a family thing. It could be a spiritual, literally a spiritual thing for you, right? I think it is all of these things. Uh, but it might specifically be sort of one thing after, the, after another. Well, here now I'm, I'm kind of in the pressure cooker at school. I'm in the pressure cooker at work. Now my family thing. I'm in the pressure cooker there. You know, I think it's going on in a lot of places. So a lot of major arcana, a fire, a water, a little bit of air. What we don't have is a lot of earth energies here. We kind of have earth here with the empress, sort of the mother earth. And then we have earth with the Taurus energy and the hierophant. That's, I think this is what is being produced by all of this. Well, and, and the Virgo energy too. This is something that you've been chosen for because spirit knows that you have such tremendous potential. Spirit is trying to kind of, um, something latent that's in you. Spirit is trying to foster it and allow it to grow and allow you to kind of step into your, your sort of superhero powers, you know? Um, so we've got, I think, the, the Empress and the Hierophant because these are sort of the goals that you're, you're achieving this sort of, um, you're achieving this, this level of, um, I don't even know what to call this. This is a level of, of beauty. This is a level of kind of, um, uh, in some way, taking what is just a, a normal plant growing in the garden, right? Go, like wild, um, like wild uh, I don't know, raspberries or something, right? Wild strawberries out just randomly in the forest or wherever they grow. Um, rather than it being just sort of um, nature doing its thing seemingly randomly to us, right? We have now the Hierophant, which is kind of saying that you are, you're being cultivated, you know, that now it's not just a, it's not just a wild wheat plants out there. Now it's, we've learned that we take these, we plant them in a p particular place, in a particular way at a certain time of year, and we take care of them. And now we've got grain for the whole winter, you know, we're not just kind of walking around aimlessly like checking to see if there's any growing around or we're just kind of out there in the in the wilderness looking for strawberries. We know how to grow it ourselves now. We know how to do it. So it's kind of like a, it's sort of your, your training, you know? You're learning how to cultivate the kind of abundance and the kind of love and the kind of success and the kind of beauty and everything that you want in life. You're being sort of set up to be the master now. The Hierophant is somebody that everybody comes to that says, how do I do this? You know? Um, I want to manifest happiness. How do I do it? I want to be successful in my business. How do I do it? Right? I want to attract those good things to me. How do I do it? Because now I feel like you're becoming that sort of kind of an expert, you know, 
metaphysical uh, expert here. Um, but the five, I think the five of, of wands is important because we've got it twice. We doubled up on the, on the fight energy that it is something that you want to struggle against. Whereas the cards are kind of in, uh, encouraging you anyway to, uh, to steer your ship into it, which seems crazy, right? Why would you do that? Well, that's, that's what you're being shown. The hermit energy, I think is, um, I think it's kind of literally your withdraw from, from things a little bit. It's almost as if uh, you've been so occupied with all of these intense activities, these intense struggles or trials or even competitions, maybe literally, maybe you're doing sports or martial arts or something like that. That is, maybe it's business, something very competitive, right? I feel like it's taken a lot of time away from your social life. I think that right now there's not really a focus on friends and family per se, you know? Um, we see the idea of like the group effort here with the six of pentacles, but it doesn't feel intimate, it doesn't feel like it's family really, you know? So it feels that you're kind of in need of connecting with your loved ones, yeah? That um, it's important for you when you can in the, in the sort of in-between moments here to connect with your family and friends in a, in a real way as, as a way for you to sort of unwind, right? But also because it's part of your growth, it's part of your path, it's something that you are in need of spiritually, okay? Um, I like the Six of Swords. I was really happy when this came out because this is like, this is showing me that you kind of understand the, the plan here. The six, this is kind of the blueprint. This is the divine plan. And I feel like you're, you're sort of looking up at this and like starting to be like, yeah, I can see it. I can see where all this is going. I can see what all this is for, you know, all the, um, all the challenges that you put yourself into, all the things that you have st strived for and fought for and all the challenge, all the obstacles, all the things that you're accomplishing, all those pressure cookers that you find yourself in I think, are all for a particular, it's all sort of headed in the right direction for you. Yeah. And I think that this is really, really reassuring for you. And this is sort of allowing you, it's like, okay, now I, I kind of see most of the plan. So I'm going to try my best to, um, you know, what we're doing here is to not steer against, not steer against the momentum of the car and try to ease into it. I forgot to set my timer here. Uh, and to ease into it uh, using this hanged man. The hanged man is that kind of trust fall. The hanged man really is sort of the opposite of the five of wands, even especially the double five of wands, right? The hanged man is someone that is just kind of, just like not, not striving for anything, not, not, not um, resisting any force has just kind of fallen backwards into the river and the rivers just, we see it in mo that motif all the time, um, of just kind of abandoning ourselves, just surrendering to the flow and trusting that it's going to take us where we need to go. Um, and this isn't really, I think the, another reason we got the double five of wands is because this isn't the idea of you not putting in any effort. That's not what we mean, right? You still need to put in effort, you still need to try to do your best, you still need to try to make things happen and, and nudge the river where you can. But the idea here is for you not to fight against the process itself. Okay, so I think that spirit showed us a, a second five of wands so that we don't misunderstand and think that the hanged man means I don't have to do anything, I can just sit back and not try and everything's going to be fine. Right? Um, the the story is not going to write itself, right? So it's important that we, we take that into account too with these, um, with these uh, five of wands. Spirit's saying to um, resist the urge to try to change course. Allow yourself to be on this river and do your very best to overcome all of the obstacles that you might find on this river. Sometimes the river's gonna be really smooth, really just like the water's like glass, right? Other times you're gonna be in the rapids, you gotta hold on. Yeah. And other times it's just up to you to kind of get your oar in and start picking up some speed because maybe the river really slows down, you know, or maybe you get stuck on a tree stump or something, right? 
Let's talk about the path of the serpent. Really good energy over here, kind of showing us what the results of all of this effort is, why you're in the pressure cooker to begin with. First of all, the Hierophant, you are, um, you're coming to master something. You're coming to sort of um, achieve that level of experience in life that sets you apart from other people. Okay, I read some meme or something yesterday that said a uh, hundred hours, what is a hundred hours a year of, of practice um, sets you like 95% above other people doing the same thing. You know, it's like, it's that discipline. I think it came out to like 18 minutes a day or something of, of focusing on developing yourself in a particular way is enough to kind of, you know, it all accumulates and it sets you above um, something else or someone else or the, the kind of the baseline of, of uh, people that are doing that thing. So I feel that there is sort of a competition energy in you and it's not so much that you're trying to be better than everybody else. You're trying to succeed and find out what spirit has chosen you for, right? What is your destiny? What is being revealed to you as the um, kind of the holy trinity of the path that I, I say, you know, who you are, where you are, and what you're doing in the future, right? What does that future look like to you? I think you're getting a glimpse of that. I think you're coming to understand what your destiny is. We see the plan up here. We're sort of accepting the plan as the plan. Um, and uh, we're, we're realizing that we are sort of coming into our very best version of ourselves. The Hierophant, to me, kind of says that it's, um, oh, it's like you are sort of merging with your true self. Yeah, that your divine fire is... Um, you're very much conscious of it now. There's a conscious relationship with this. This is sort of the inner master, the inner guide. And in some ways, that this is exactly what the hermit is looking for. The hermit is going within to try to make contact with that spiritual entity called the self or the soul or the spirit or whatever you want to call it. Um, and so, you know, I think that this is a big part of that as well. Okay, and this might, it might feel like you're coming closer and closer and closer into contact with this sort of spiritual entity. Okay, the one that is sort of guiding you through life where it really feels as if you are chosen. It feels as if your life really does have a plan. And it's going to feel like there is some force that's sort of leading you from one, from one thing to the other. It's kind of like uh, my daughter was doing one of these coloring book things the other day, which is, it's just a bunch of dots, right, with numbers. And you're supposed to trace the dots, one, two, three, four, and then at the end you've got like a flower. Hers was a flower. Um, and so I feel like it's kind of like that, that we don't know what the picture is, but the more steps we take, and if we, if we allow ourselves to kind of follow the divine order of things, one to two, three, four, uh, pretty soon we're going to start to see that more clear picture. And I think that's part of the six of swords up there, being able to see that, that bigger picture. Spirit saying, start journaling more if you aren't already. Keep track of thoughts, feelings, behaviors, right? All those, keep track and, and, um, and literally, like make sure you, you write down what you're doing, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and uh, track that over time and you'll maybe be, you'll, you'll have a, a, a um, you'll have a nice, colorful description of what this connect the dots picture is, right? Because you've been writing stuff down. And so it's, it's really going to add some life and some depth to what might just be a two dimensional line drawing. You know what I mean? Um, in the environment, we've got the six of pentacles and right now is not really the time for teamwork. Um, necessarily, uh, it, it is talking about the, um, the success in the, the outer world. Okay, so I think you're finding the financial situation is getting better. I find that this might even be talking about some really big things happening in terms of your work or your career or how you make money. Maybe you're retired, how you make money. Something big is happening there. There's some really nice kind of harmony that's taking place there. This is kind of also um, talking about a group of people, but I don't think it's teamwork. I think it's you being sort of like um, invited into some society or some group or some club or some kind of organization. Now, I don't think you're working together with these people, but I think it's something that you're kind of associating yourself with. 
Yeah, maybe you're getting into Mensa. Maybe this is you getting into the school. Maybe this is you getting into the company kind of thing or um, the country club or I don't know what it is. But I feel that this is um, this is you being a, a part of the group, a part of, and maybe it's even just more of a metaphysical or spiritual thing because I sort of feel as if because of your achievements, because of your level of wisdom now, right? Your level of connection and, and how you have grown and kind of the, the accomplishments that you've made spiritually. I feel like maybe you're being kind of, um, you're being, uh, you're being brought into this elite group of, um, I don't know, like I'm hearing bodhisattva, bodhisattva, but I don't, you know, I don't want to, um, give you that impression. Maybe that has something to do with it. But I feel like you're kind of, you're entering an upper echelon of something with it. Not a lot of people attain that, but now you've sort of earned it and now you're getting into that group. And I don't know, maybe it's just like the dean's list at school, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but the six of pentacles, very, very good energy. The nine of wands is uh, your strength. You have this unbreakable will. This is sort of your obstacle though, okay? Because it's important for you to learn how to yield and how to go with the flow of the river and not try to swim upstream. You can try to nudge the river here and there, but you can't swim upstream, right? So your strength is your best quality. It's kind of the, the thing that gets in your way the most is your fierce um, perseverance, your fierce sort of stubborn, fiery energy, you know? Um, but that's another thing that you're really learning here in this process is how to be very, very strong and how strength doesn't always indicate forcefulness. You know, there, we have the idea of sort of the, um, uh, the gentle giant or the, um, the subtle strength, right? Or the, the quiet strength, you know? It doesn't always have to be on display. It doesn't always have to be, um, you know, a kind of an, an exertive um, show of strength, right? It can be even the strength of being able to quietly endure what we know we must, even if it just means like not complaining, right? Or, um, you know, not getting mad or upset about, about things that um, don't really go our way or they seem like they're not going our way, right? But look at the end here, Ace of Cups. This is absolutely wonderful. This is an ocean of water. This is kind of... Um, the way I look at the Ace of Cups is I feel like this is sort of the ocean of love and spiritual light and energy in the universe. Um, and instead of all the rivers flowing to the ocean, I feel like this is the ocean then feeding all the rivers back to the earth. Okay. So if we have this source of water. This is like, I don't know, it's, it could be like a black hole of water or whatever. It's the singularity of, of spiritual light and spiritual energy. And I feel like it is flowing outward and it's creating all these other rivers that are um, irrigating all of these other areas of your life. Your physical, financial life, your mental, emotional life, your spiritual, creative life, your interpersonal life, your romantic life, right? All of these things are benefiting from, from well, from you, from you getting in a deeper connection with yourself and realizing that you have this destiny and that you are chosen to become the best version of yourself, okay? The Ace of Cups, a lot of joy, a lot of bliss, a lot of excitement. This might even be talking about um, sort of toward the end of this process, you getting um, either could be could be the onset of a romance. Uh, it could be um, it could be a, a new life kind of dawning. Right? It might be it might be you feeling like this is sort of a new uh, a rebirth, a new life for you. It could literally be, um, you know, you're having a child or someone close to you is having a child or maybe you get a pet. Um, but I feel as if it is, um, it, uh, it's the beginning of something really, really joyous. Okay, so in, in a way it's putting an end to this, all this path of this trial, all these pressure cookers that you've been in. I think you're almost, it's almost done. It's almost kind of the last one for a while, right? And you're going to have a period of, uh, of just love and and beauty and joy and pleasure and um i think you're getting a break from all the pressure cookers this is now you get to just you get to eat the meal you get to relax and enjoy things right you get to sample the the fruits of your labor here let's look at the mystery card before it gets too late i did say that this was going to be a short one um 
I wanna see more water. I wanna see some way in which that Ace of Cups is flowing out to other areas of your life. Let's take a look. To the world, yes, so this is the, uh, the singularity of love now flowing out to the world. It's kind of the rivers are going backwards now in a way, right? Um, I feel like all these rivers are bringing you to the source of yourself, right? Bringing you to the ultimate ex experience of God, God as deity, of spirit, of source. And then you from this source are then coming back into the world and spreading all that joy and love and beauty around everywhere. This is, uh, I think, a life that's full of travel, it's full of, of joy, it's full of new experiences. It's kind of like you're getting out of the pressure cooker and you're just, you're living life, you're traveling. Um, there are no boundaries, no restrictions, okay? And uh, I, this is, to me, a really, really good confirmation of things. We are gonna do an extended reading if you wanna stick around, link up top, link down below. New readings for Aries, Mondays and Fridays. This was a special update for you. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is totally free, it doesn't cost anything. Leave a comment and let me know where in the world you're watching from. I want you to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.